hi guys welcome back to my channel i know that i've been gone for like a hot minute but y'all nursing school kind of like sorta kicked me in the butt <laughs> towards the end um after i filmed i think like in march um i had a lot to take in it just got intense but we are here we are back um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i have lots of friends who are who just got accepted into the nursing program and i'm so stoked for them i'm so happy for them um so they asked me or they have been asking me for any tips anything that i can um you know help them out with um and i came out with eight tips i have them here on my phone um i came out with eight helpful tips that could you know maybe help them or help you whoever entered this video um so if anything of that sort interests you guys make sure you hit that thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you like fitness or you know cooking or baking um and any nursing content um I don't know how consistent I'll be. I said this multiple times. This is very, very fun for me. I think it's, I enjoy it a lot. Um, also traveling videos, whatever, whenever I get the chance to travel, I'll record those. Um, but make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you go. Um, so here are eight of my tips for nursing school. Um, keep in mind, I just finished my first block of nursing school. So, um, we are happy. I did pretty good. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, so I just wanted to give some tips. So if that interests you, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay. So my number one tip overall is to be prepared. Just be prepared. Um, I know that that sounds, you know, like, okay, what do you mean be prepared? Um, be prepared as in when they re when they're requiring something of you, get it done right away. Do not wait. I am notorious for um, working very last minute. I do not know why. I thrive on procrastination, and not when it comes to studying. I mean, like, if you tell me I need to I need to give an assignment or something that's due at a particular time. I will wait until it's due, pretty much. I kind of changed the settings because it looked a little too bright. But um, what I was saying was, I'm, I always wait last minute. Like if you tell me that an assignment is, or not an assignment, of uh, certain paperwork for like, for example, there's um, my clinical exchange, which is where you have to submit all your vaccinations and everything, that part's easy. But before you do that, you have to link it to your American data bank. And I'm pretty sure that's what everybody has to do, every nursing student out there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but here, where I'm in nursing school, which is Arizona, my particular program, that's what we do. So you have to upload all of your paperwork and everything. When I tell you I waited till last minute to get like a physical done, I mean I waited last minute. I'm not proud of that, but it gave me so much more anxiety. And one thing that I've learned in my first block of nursing school, which I started nursing school a little bit before that technically because I started my BSN program. But what I learned is do not procrastinate because procrastinating only adds to your anxiety. And you're already anxious all the time. You're already stressed out all the time. So in, in order to help prevent that, honestly, be prepared. If they give you a deadline, get that done before the deadline. For example, I have this, um, this form due that you have to in order to sink your um, financial aid to the community college in the, in the university. It's not due until like, I think August 15th. I got that done like a couple weeks ago. So I'm gonna try really hard this block to not be unprepared because waiting last minute only gives me more anxiety. I get it done and that's why I think I wait till last minute because I get it done and it all works out in the end, but it works out with so much more stress. So if you can minimize your stress level by being prepared and getting all those deadlines met before they're even due, do that to yourself. Don't put yourself through more misery because nursing school already challenges you in so many different ways that you have no idea if you haven't started the program yet. Your clinical stuff. What I mean by that is when you get to your clinicals, when you have to go to the hospital and do your clinicals, I was blessed enough to be able to do two clinicals my first block. Um, you're there for a long time. 
you're there basically like 12 hours. I'm used to working 13, 14, 15 hour shifts at work. So 12 hours to me, it's doable. But regardless if it's doable, nursing school, like, like your clinicals, you're taking in a lot of information. You're doing a lot of things. You want to get involved every chance that you get. If they say who wants to give out meds, give out meds, who wants to do a head to toe, do a head to toe, who wants to give injections like insulin, you know, or the, we, I think we gave out heparin, um, this block too. do that. Put yourself out there and do it. Do not lose out on those opportunities, but because you're doing so much, you're losing a lot of energy you know you're tired you're out of breath you're thirsty you're hungry so always take snacks always take always take a huge i always carry my huge um gallon of or half gallon of water i did mess up one clinical day it was my first clinical i'm i hated myself for that you guys i took a water bottle and i mean they had water they had um i don't even i think they had water stands but I didn't even think about that, but I took one water and I was like, crap. And then you also have to carry cash sometimes, depending on what your, what hospital you're at. And I remember the first clinical that I was, that I went to, I didn't take food. I, I mean, I took food, but I like snacks, but I didn't take a lunch. I bought my lunch there because I was kind of like, am I going to be the only one? Where am I going to put my lunch at? So if I can recommend is always take snacks, lots of snacks, cheese sticks, turkey sticks, crackers, a protein bar, um, a protein shake. If you want to add water, shake it up and chug it. Um, always take a huge thing of water. Um, and then one cool thing about clinicals is that at least mine in this particular experience, we were able to kind of walk away and go eat a snack. Like if you were hungry, go eat a snack, take something because there was like one time my first clinical where I felt like I was going to pass out. I was honestly like so thirsty. I was so hungry. And I think I only took like one thing of snack and I was like, I cannot do that to myself. And I believe my second clinical, I went super prepared. I took my lunch. I took snacks. I, I made sure I had my breakfast in the morning. I had my coffee in the morning. Always make sure that you're prepared for clinicals. Always, always, always. Aside from taking your important documents that you have to take. Minimize what you have to take for us. I know that was a lot of information. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water because I'm honestly so thirsty. I've been chugging this whole thing all day. I have been slacking on my water game. So today I'm very proud of myself. Okay. Another thing is you also want to make sure that you study. You want to be prepared by studying. Do the do what you can to start studying early. I know like towards the end when I was kind of like stressed out, I was kind of like slacking on my study game. But at the beginning, like, you know, it, it paid off. Make your studying sessions worth it. If you're going to sit down and study and you're going to be on your phone for like an hour or two, honestly, don't even bother studying. Maybe you're not, not there. So like a huge thing that I found very helpful was like, if I'm going to study, I'm going to go work out. Um, I, al I always believe in physical health. I believe that you have to do that. But there were certain times where I was like, I don't have time to do this. I don't even have time to eat. Like my boyfriend had to, if you guys know, obviously, you know, Enrique, Enrique had to feed me. He, you know, had to take on a lot of tasks. And there, I'm like, eating takes too much time. Working out takes too much time. By the time I get ready, I go to the gym. I come back, like, that's already three hours. So, but... But it's important to work out. It wasn't until the end when I was taking my finals. And I, I mean, when you have exams every week, you have exams every week. Um, but when I was taking my finals towards the end, I was actually kind to myself. I said, you know what? I'm going to study super hard for like five, six hours. My uh, friend would come over and we would study or we would have study groups. And then I said, after this, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to go work out. Because working out, if you guys look up studies, everything, like it, it just opens your mind up. It gives you, sometimes you're in a rut. You don't even want to sit down. You feel so depressed. And on top of that, you know, it's you're busy all the time. You Sometimes you're going to eat what you're going to eat. And you're just going to go, 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 go. So you feel so shitty about yourself. So if there's one thing that I can give you, one tip, go on a walk or read a book or you know do whatever you want to do but be kind to yourself in that sense of like allowing yourself to do that because in order to study and be productive and be prepared you need to take care of yourself your mind is a powerful tool but it needs a break and the only way that i can shut my brain off is either sleeping or if i'm working out so find whatever you need, give your brain a work of a break. And then when you come back to studying, what didn't make sense prior to your studying is going to make so much more sense. 
you're gonna notice and you're gonna say, oh my God, like I was, I had a major brain block. So always, always, always study. Another last thing for being prepared when it comes to, you know, nursing school is for your simulations. So we would have sims where we would go practice with like the mannequins. I cannot tell you how many times your girl forgot her stethoscope like so many times i had a classmate i think it was like my last simulation she was like carla you brought your stethoscope i'm so proud of you lou if you know who you are that was she was um she's the girl in my clinical exchange she'll never watch this but she was like i'm so proud of you girl like you actually brought your stethoscope you guys like every single simulation i was like hey can i borrow your stethoscope hey can i borrow your like it was so bad and half the time you didn't need it because sometimes you divide up the task so one will do an assessment the other one will ask like questions for like level of level of um like how where they are whatever i can't even think right now but because i keep thinking back to that and um yeah so that was very 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 funny so always be prepared make a checklist of what you're going to need for your clinicals what you're going to need for your simulations everything always do them because you find yourself so stressed out that you're just like honestly waking up and you're on the go you don't even have time to do anything because now you're like i don't want to run late for our simulations if you were late they, they locked you out like or i remember like the first one there was a girl who wasn't prepared and she like didn't have her her work before done her like patient information and everything and she literally they they took her out of the the class i i know who you know who you are if you watch this love you but we felt so bad for her and i was like oh my god i think that was our first our first first simulation and you guys i literally was like holy crap because it wasn't it was my friend one of my cl uh, uh one of my partners or friend friends in the in my clinical group we were all new to it like we didn't really talk to each other we didn't really you know it's kind of awkward at the beginning but he posted on the group chat and i don't think she was on the group chat and he said hey like don't forget to do this person and we were all like what what person and he said oh she mentioned it but she like briefly mentioned it guys if he wouldn't have said that i would have been unprepared and i would have been kicked out of that simulation so always be prepared, always ask your instructor, Instructor, hey, is there something that needs to be done for simulation or something I didn't hear you, maybe I missed that. Always, always be prepared because if you get that one instructor that's gonna kick you out, you're gonna lose out on that. And there's hours that you need to put into your um, your work, you know? You need to you need to like kind of build those hours. Clinicals, um, I always thought they were kind of more like I don't know better arranged i guess you can put but clinicals are messy um you kind of just go and they just at least from my experience in my first block everybody's is different and it might be different this time around but i thought that we would be assigned a particular like a particular nurse and a particular job if that makes sense which we kind of were but there were certain but but there were certain tasks, like for example, hey, you can do head to toe, hey, you can do um, blood sugar tests, um, you know, this and that. So you have to get done uh, this and this and this and this, and you have to get it done by this time. And we're like, oh shoot, so we have to do, and then our instructor has to come and watch us do it to make sure that we're doing it correctly. So that was kind of messy because you had to text her and then she would either show up on time or she wouldn't. Um, because once you get that opportunity to pass out meds, if the nurse tells you, hey, would you like to pass out meds, you have a certain amount of time. And if you get a nice nurse, which my second time around, I got a, an amazing nurse, then she'll be kind and generous and kind of be more patient and be like, no worries, when she responds, we'll do the next one. But they have their job to do also, right? So they have to pass out meds by a certain time and they have to do their blood glucose checks or blood sugar, yeah, same thing, blood sugar tests by a certain time. So you kind of are like caught in the middle. And I remember we did a blood, I did a blood sugar test before my instructor got there. And she said, I, I think I actually, yeah, I did it by myself. And she's like, you're not supposed to do that. She was mad. And I, I was kind of put on the spot because the lady who I thought was a nurse was actually a tech. I hadn't seen her badge, but she like kind of walked around like she was a nurse. Um, she just had been working there for years. She was like, who wants to do them? And we were kind of like, oh, like we'll do them. You know, and we kind of did them without her. It's I know it's a simple, simple thing, just like a prick, a, a pick, and then you you check it. But she was upset, and I was like, oh crap. But then I was like, but you didn't get here on time, you know. 
and so it's kind of hard just finding that balance of taking the opportunity to do things but also making sure that you do stay on track with your instructor because to, i thought i was going to get in trouble and she did say don't you ever do that again don't you ever do something without me being here which i totally understand i know that it was just a blood sugar test and it's the simplest thing but regardless i completely understand and that was op uh, obviously my fault um also with clinicals just kind of like i already said take advantage of any opportunity that you can do and always you know they're they always take snacks always be prepared uh, i told you how they went and my last thing is to just be open-minded about clinicals if something is wrong or something is happening whatever is the case be a sponge soak it all in hey you want to go here sure hey you want to go there hey sh you know just just be open-minded about it don't say mm, i really don't care to watch that wound care you know like just go and do it be open-minded soak it all in you're in we're in this chapter of our life right now where we're just gonna learn 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 and we just have to be a sponge and if something goes wrong just do it and there's one thing my job taught me it's like healthcare is expect the unexpected right so you throw out all that ocd which i'm a queen of ocd but my job has taught me a lot of patience and a lot of hey this doesn't go your way suck it up and figure it out because no matter what you're going to be okay so when it comes to your clinicals always be open-minded always be willing to do whatever it takes and just soak it in enjoy it because your clinical should be fun they're that fun part where you get to implement everything that you're learning and you go to, you get to go out there and you get to meet these patients and learn their stories and learn their conditions and what's happening i remember i saw like an external fixation on like this guy's hips he got ran over by a jeep multiple times it was it was just insane and i had to do you know like change um him and like certain stuff and it was just so so cool so many cool stuff that i've gotten to see and i'm only like a semester in so always just be open-minded take take advantage of whatever you can and just roll with it that's all i can say point would be to find a study group or a support system so my clinical group we are so blessed that we got to be with each other again this semester coming up but you guys when i say like my clinical group is the best we are the best we make fun of each other in the best way possible we do not judge each other we understand that we're all a hot mess and we're all just trying to get by and some you know whoever is smart they're always willing to like give out in information like you know if some people are smarter than others and that's okay take it in i'm not the smartest in my group at all by any means i struggle and i'm able to be honest with them don't compare yourself to them or to anybody else you are in your own path follow that path you uh may not be a great test taker i'm not the best test taker but i do very well in hands-on or stuff you know so always just if seek out help when you need it but don't compare yourself remember that you're in your own path and you need to just you know if you fail that exam and you trust them enough to for them to be there then do that i've had multiple crying sessions with my partner i called her crying she called me crying we motivated each other i tell i told them hey like i totally bombed my exam i was crying and i found support through them if you find those good uh, that good group of people hold on to them because they're gonna get you by because your family unless they're nurses or anything like that they're not gonna understand. My boyfriend doesn't understand what I'm going through. My family doesn't understand what I'm going through. So when you find this good support system that understands and, and, and gets you, lean with it, you know? So I really, I found support through them. I found support through another friend who is a block ahead of me. I've called her crying. She's told me all her stories. If you know who you are, um, I, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. She told me to hand on, ha you know, hang on. I totally failed my exit exam, bombed my exit exam, and my grade dropped. And I told her, hey, like, I don't think I'm going to pass. Um, I obviously wasn't failing, but um, she told me, don't, who cares about that? Keep going. And I had finals, and I, my brain was just like, crap, I don't think I can do this. And I ended up passing, you know? So just find that good support system. Um, I think my fourth meet with your instructor anytime you get some instructors have like meetings after exams to go over your exams They'll tell you what you did wrong what you can do better They'll give you books that you can read my instructor was very very helpful She gave me certain resources that I can look at so always seek help from your instructor Don't just hide behind unless you don't have any questions, but I always I met up with my instructor I think like four or five times so always seek help always 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 um they need to 
so that you can under they you know that they understand where you're at mentally right um and then my fifth one would be take extra classes that will help i'm currently gonna be starting a math class um it's only two days before i start my second block and i did re really really good on my math for you know my calculations or whatever um i feel extremely confident but i'm taking that extra class because it was recommended it was 40 dollars, and i said you know what it's only gonna help so there's another class that they have that I wasn't aware of where they'll review exams or questions regarding the exams that are coming up and I wasn't aware of that class. So when I signed up for this for my classes this time, I made sure that I was on that class because I felt like I was missing out on information and even if I wasn't, I want to be involved and I want to be the one to decide, hey, this is helpful or this is not helpful, you know? So always seek out for those so okay so number six is going to be to purchase any nplex books that you think will help you i have a couple of saunders books i'm going to be doing an essentials video for nursing students so i'm going to show those on that so stay tuned um but always purchase any extra nplex books that are going to kind of help you with how to answer nplex style questions your instructors might have any ideas on which ones don't go crazy because they're all kind of the same but definitely look into that if you have a little bit of extra money and you want to you know invest in one of those um another tip with tip number seven um it's going to be um to look up nplex style questions there's a video that i will try to link down below that our instructor showed and they actually showed in that one class i'm telling you about that was very helpful so always look at those sata questions are they true or false Practice, practice, practice your NCLEX style questions. I still need to practice them, but definitely look into that. Check out that video. I'll have that link down below. It was beyond helpful. It's to be kind to yourself. You're entering this new chapter of your life. You know, this is a step to your career. You've dreamed of this step. You've dreamed to be here. I remember I told my boyfriend, I just want to get in and I'm here. I'm here, I'm doing it. Be extra kind to yourself treat yourself with so much so much kindness you are not an idiot you are not stupid not everybody can do this but you're in it you just got accepted into nursing school think about that cherish that moment you know take pictures of you crying because that's part of your journey i've done that i have pictures on my phone be super super gentle with yourself nourish yourself if you need to rest rest if you want a bath take that bath be super kind. You're doing this. You're going to get through it. Trust me. We're going to get through this. We just need to be kind to ourselves because we're so hard on ourselves and this isn't easy. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'm super, super excited to film for you guys to have a week in the life of a nursing student and certain stuff like that. But I will see you guys on my next video where I'm going to show nursing student essential um, items that are going to be helpful for you and that I think are essential. So again, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys on my next video. Thank you.